Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Math with Mr. S. And uh, this will be our introduction to our new unit on geometry. And before we get into actual exercises, we're going to take a look at a few skills um, that we need before we start the unit. The first one is kind of a neat concept. Uh, it's related to triangles. And uh, to get it started, I'm going to take some cardstock paper, and I'm just going to cut out a triangle. It can be really a triangle of any shape, but um, let's just come up with something here. Fairly randomly done. Here's a triangle. Now, we can see here that the three angles in the triangle, well, they might be similar, but they are um, all, all unique, but they're related to each other in a certain way. Uh, and the way to see this relationship is to take your triangle and tear off each of these vertices. So I'm going to tear this one off and just place it on my paper. I'll get the one from this side off and put it on the paper. And I'll get the last one off and I'll place it on the paper as well. So these are my three vertices now. And it doesn't matter what shape of triangle you start with, but if you take these and you put them together so that those vertices touch and the angles are lined up exactly with each other, uh, same thing will happen every time. You might begin to see it now already. But we get ourselves a straight line right along the bottom. Um, and that tells us something about the angles in a triangle. You may recall that a straight line, if you were to place a protractor on it, will be an angle of 180 degrees. So if I start on one side and work my way around from zero all the way around and I end here, that's a 180 degree angle. And that is true of every triangle you could draw no matter what the shape. If you would tear the vertices off and put them together, you will always end up with a straight line. This means that all the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. So the next thing we're going to look at now is how do we measure angles. And to get that job done well, I'm going to start by drawing one for you and then we'll measure it together. So I am going to draw an acute angle to start with. So over here, let's just create ourselves an acute angle. And we'll call this A, B, C. And the way that we name angles is to start on one arm of the angle, move toward the center and come out. So you could call this A, B, C, or you could call this C, B, A. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to call it angle A, B, C. And then we have to measure this. So all of your uh, protractors at home should have this um, half moon here, and then you'll see two lines that cross, and there's sort of a center vertex right in the middle there. That should always go on the vertex of your angle. Then we make sure that this arm of the protractor that is called zero lines up exactly with the arm of our angle. And it can be either arm, by the way. I'm going to choose to do this one on the bottom. Then I start at the zero and I work my way up. So we have 10, 20, 30, not quite 40 degrees. You can see it comes through right about at the 39. And so I can indicate here that my angle is 39 degrees. Now, as you know, we can get acute angles, we can get right angles, and sometimes we get things called obtuse angles. So let's make ourselves an obtuse angle this time, and we'll do our best to measure him. Call this guy D E F. So now I'm going to measure angle DEF. So I get my protractor, and again, that little crosshairs needs to go right on the vertex of the angle, and the arm labeled zero has to line up with one arm of my angle. And there it is. And now I just move up from that zero, up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, past 90, all the way up past 140, and I'm just prior to 150 there. So I have an angle of 149 degrees. So that's the measure of this obtuse angle as opposed to this acute angle.
and that's measuring angles. Now another skill that we need is the ability to draw a triangle using a uh, compass. This is uh, my father's old engineering set that he used many years ago. My father was actually a physician, but he did do some engineering work as well. So, this is the instrument we need. Now, the ones that you folks have will be a little different from mine, I think. They'll probably look a bit more like this. And with this kind, um, you unscrew that as far as you can, and then you place your pencil in it. And the trick here is not to have it too far up or too far back, but so that the lead and the point approximately line up with each other. That's your best situation. Um, and then we go to draw a triangle. So let's imagine that I wanted to draw, uh, let's call it triangle D E F. And I'll, uh, as is good practice, I'll begin with a sketch of that triangle. So D E F. And let's imagine that we wanted to have E F seven centimeters, DF five centimeters, and DE uh, six centimeters. Okay, you can do this any number of ways, but the way that I prefer to do it is um, to start with the longest side, in this case EF, that I've indicated to be seven centimeters. So I'll take out my ruler, and we'll measure a line of seven centimeters. It's important when you do this to ensure that you start not at the end of the ruler, but at the zero point on your ruler. So not at the end, but right here at the, the very first marking on the ruler. And I move from there up across seven centimeters. As soon as you have it, um, mark what you know about it right away. It keeps everything oriented well. So those are the things we know about that line. So now. It's time to introduce uh, the use of this instrument to um, create the other sides. So we have the seven centimeter here. It says that DF is five centimeters. So I take this compass and I put the metal point on the zero line of the ruler, not the end of the ruler, but the zero line. And then I make this, bring in this lead point until it's five centimeters apart. And I think I am bang on right there, five centimeters. Then I check again. What was five centimeters in my line? Well, it was DF. So this is line DF here. The vertex that's already there is the F. So I'll put the metal point on the vertex that already exists. And then the lead point can do the job of drawing the arc. And you can make it fairly big because you're not exactly sure where the other arc's going to intersect it. I hope that shows up through the camera. Our next one then is the uh, the remaining side, the ED over here, which it says here, ED or DE doesn't matter, six centimeters. So again, metal point on the vertex and out to six centimeters. And it looks like I'm right about there. So this is the line DE. E is the vertex that exists. So I put my metal point on the E and then I just cross that first arc. Just needs a small tick line and where those two cross, that's my new vertex. So that's right there, and if I look back at my sketch, I know that that's point D. And now I just have to add these together, and I've got my, or join these together and have my triangle. So there's side ED, here's side DF. And then of course I need to mark on there what I know, so DF is the side that's five centimeters, and DE is six centimeters. And that's a complete construction.